This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Kitty Hawk's Fitter, Dragon's SU-76i, Hasegawa's Hammer Knight, and ICM's Stubby i16. New product rundown, proudly brought to you by Hobbyco, distributors of fine model kits from Italy. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, the show that breaks open the latest kits to show you what's inside. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's kick things off with Kitty Hawk's terrific 148 scale Sukhoi Su-17. The first Soviet swing wing aircraft, the 17 was developed from Sukhoi's Su-7. Known to NATO as the Fitter, it entered Soviet service in 1970 and included tours in Afghanistan in the 80s and Chechnya in the 90s. It's also seen combat with the air arms of Angola, Libya, Iraq, Peru, Syria, and Yemen. A score of other nations have operated it as well. Surface detail is on par with recent Kitty Hawk kits and comprises fine recessed panel lines and rivets. The cockpit features a multi-part ejection seat with optional covers and separate D-rings. There's a floor, walls with consoles and molded panels, and a rear bulkhead, instrument panel, shroud, and controls. A detailed Liuka engine lurks inside the rear fuselage and incorporates front and rear fans, stator blades, an afterburner ring, a jet pipe, and a multi-part exhaust nozzle. The rear fuselage is separate, but there's no guidance to leave it loose and show the engine. Separate wells provide for the speed brakes to be posed open. Solidly molded inboard wings have detailed wheel wells and separate walls inside. The exterior shows fine vents and external stiffeners and separate flaps. Outboard, the swinging sections of the wing feature nice detail with separate flaps, ailerons, and leading edge slats. Delicate, and I mean thin, wing fences attached to the upper inboard wings. The rudder is separate from the vertical tail, and the one-piece horizontal stabilators fit holes so should be poseable. The intake shock cone is a sharp, single-piece molding. The landing gear legs have minimal mold seams, and there's detail inside the gear doors. In addition to the windshield and canopy, the clear parts tree provides the HUD glass, position, and landing lights. The kit provides underwing stores aplenty, including 100, 250, and 500 pound bombs, B-13L, B-8M, and UB-32 rocket launchers. KH-23 and S-25L air-to-ground missiles, R-73 and R-60 air-to-air missiles, SPPU-22 and UBK-23 gun pods, S-24 rockets, KKR-1T reconnaissance pod, and fuel tanks. Decals provide markings for seven fitters. One is Ukrainian, the rest are Soviet or Russian, including at least three Afghan war veterans. The SU-17 is an important aircraft and it's great to see an all-new kit of it. Plenty of colorful marking options should make it a popular subject. Our second kit comes from Dragon, a 135th scale SU-76i. In the battles on the Eastern Front, both sides used captured equipment. About 200 Panzer III's were converted into self-propelled guns by the Red Army. After replacing the turret with an armored casemate, the factory mounted a 76mm gun. Some of those were recaptured by the German Army and a commander's cupola fitted. That's what this kit represents. Just like the Soviets, Dragon has converted this very nice Panzer III, so many of the parts come from that kit. Shared parts include the road wheels, torsion bars, idlers, and drive sprockets. Other transferred running gear parts are the road wheel arms, shock absorbers, and the rear plates. Most of the upper hull remains the same, so you get Panzer III fenders, engine deck, engine hatches, and glasses plate. Many of the parts on these trees aren't used, so make room in your spare parts box. The Panzer III fighting compartment remains also, but the upper parts need to be cut for the conversion. Dragon provides clear diagrams to guide the surgery. New parts include the casemate, hatches, modified front plate, Soviet-style fuel tanks for the rear of the vehicle, toolboxes for the fenders, mantlet, and its armored shield, and the characteristic box for the gun's recoil mechanism. The rest of the 76mm gun, including a two-part barrel and breech, come on a separate tree. The German cupola includes separate hatches and optional open and closed vision blocks. The latter have clear interiors. The casemate needs to be cut into to make room for the cupola. Photo-etched metal provides engine screens and brackets, fuel tank handles, and a few other details. Individual link tracks include grousers and are handed. Decals provide markings for three vehicles, including two in winter camouflage. This isn't the only SU-76i from Dragon. Look for the Soviet version also, and it's great to have a nice kit of it. Next from Hasegawa, the latest Maschinenkrieger kit, a 120th MK-44 Ops B. This is the another armored fighting suit from the mine of Kao Yokoyama. Set in the 29th century, the Machine and Krieger universe tells the story of conflict of two groups for control of a post-apocalyptic Earth. 
Typical of Hasegawa's MAK offerings, the Hammer Knight uses polycaps and vinyl connectors, so the figure remains movable. Features include a detailed cockpit with driver's seats and controls inside the nicely molded body. There's half a figure for the driver. The body sits atop legs with several flexible joints. It's a feature also seen in the arms. Multi-part hands grip a large bazooka-like weapon. Vinyl hoses add realistic flexibility to the mechanicals. The sky's pretty much the limit when it comes to finishing MAK kits. Hasegawa provides decals and color diagrams for at least four options. But feel free to have some fun with it. These kits provide a great canvas for trying armor weathering techniques. Speaking of fun, you guys responded to our request for more poetry. So we thought we'd read some more here. Precision on display, process of many a day. Close in on the stack, dust bunnies attack. Cat kills the bunny, nothing left that's funny. The plane dies, the modeler cries. Let me not to the marriage of two parts. Admit large gaps, a kit is not a kit. Which when assemble, well dismay in parts. Or blurs fine molds from endless sanding of it. Oh no, it is a mini hour joy that looks on bare cockpit and plans scratch building. Customs may label mailed detail sets a toy. Yet etch and resin be not boyish lily building. Futures not enamels fool, but test first and don't assume. Hot lacquers won't wrinkle your acrylic substrates. And though, be tied the kit. Reside on shelf of do, do, do. Nothing do, repairs do. so fast as cyana acrylates. If this be error and upon me laid, I never built nor airbrush ever sprayed. Tiny plastic pieces put together with great care transformed into magic, 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 magic. So many kits, so little time. Need Cat's Life, nine. Moving back to aircraft, let's take a look at ICM's 148 scale Polykarpov I-16 Type 24. Revolutionary when it was introduced in the 1930s, the Soviet monoplane soldiered on well into World War II. And in the hands of experienced pilots, held its own against the Luftwaffe. The Type 24, built in 1939 and 40, featured a more powerful engine and beefed up landing gear. Typical of ICM's recent aircraft, the I-16's parts show beautifully executed surface detail with very fine recessed panel lines where appropriate. Molded detail decorates the inside of the fuselage for the cockpit. Controls and more cram the tiny pilot space. There's a floor, front and rear frames, instrument panel with clear dials, seat, and a bunch of separate controls. A one-piece lower wing incorporates full wheel wells and establishes dihedral. The upper wing sections have panel detail and the ailerons are separate. The rudder and elevators are also separate and trapped between the stabilizer halves should be movable. Up front is a good replica of the 900 horsepower M63 engine with a mount, cylinders, intake manifold, valve rods, and exhaust pipes. A multi-part cowl includes a separate face and movable vents. The landing gear features detailed struts and the gear doors have structural components molded inside. The nicely molded prop has separate front and rear spinner sections. Clear parts provide the windshield, gun sight, and lights. Decals provide markings for four I-16s, most in green and blue from the summer of 1940 and 41. One all aluminum bird is from early 1942. This is by no means the first I-16 and 148 scale, but it packs plenty of detail and should be a fun build. <laughs> Look for a review of it as well as the fitter in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the April issue on sale now. <laughs> Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Quackity Nash. <laughs> and I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Voice yes, correct. I know it did. <laughs> I, I had a catch in my throat and <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking I need some water there, but... <laughs> Surface details on par with recent Kitty Hawk kits. <laughs>